Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another Novel Women Read video. Something like that. Anyway, for those of you who might be new to the channel, first of all, welcome. Uh, I'm glad to, uh, to have you. Um, I'm organizing a, a read-along. It started last year in November, in which we read um, a book by a female Nobel Prize for Literature winner each month. Um, you will find the Goodreads, the link to the Goodreads group uh, with the reading schedule down below. So if you uh, want to join, you can still do that, of course. And in March... We read our fifth book, and that was Burger's Daughter by Nadine Gordema. The book was first published in 1979. Uh, it was then banned in South Africa for a couple of months because Nadine Gordema uh, was a South African, a white South African um, a novelist, essayist, and activist. Uh, she died in 2014, and many of her books are dealing with. Uh, with apartheid, and she won the Nobel Prize uh, in 1991. And as I said, many of her books are centered around the theme of apartheid, and uh, Berger's Daughter is no exception. Um, the book is set in 1974, at least that, that's when the book opens, and our main character is Rosa Berger, the daughter of Lionel Berger, hence Berger's daughter, um, an activist for the Forbidden Communist Party in South Africa who died in, just when the novel opens, dies in prison. Uh, Rosa's mother uh, also died in prison when, when Rosa was quite young. We then follow in the book uh, Rosa's um, yeah, it's not a coming of age because she is 26, but it's a sort of coming of age. Um, her um, journey trying to find her place in the world, in South Africa, in the political situation in South Africa. The book is uh, written um, uh, in, a, in a structure that is divided into two sort of point of views. We have, first of all, a very... Part of the novel is written in an introspective uh, first-person account of Rosa, um, in which she uh, she addresses, as it were, her thoughts uh, to her one of her lovers, Conrad, or her father. So she is talking not so much to herself, but to another person, but in her mind. And the other part of the novel is written from third person, giving us partly um, the same events or the same, um, uh, talking about the same things that Rosa also talks in that introspective. So giving us, as it were, two perspectives of Rosa's life. Um, we follow her, as I said, uh, first in South Africa, then she um, moves to Paris for a while, she lives in London for a while, she contemplates whether to immigrate from South Africa or not. Um, she has various encounters uh, with, uh, with men, one of which is Conrad, one of her lovers. Um, there's another man she meets in Paris with whom she falls in love. And then there is um, a, a black South African um, who is called Basi, which means little boss in Afrikaans, um, uh, who grew up together with Rosa in Rosa's family uh, because Rosa's parents took him in after uh, Basi's uh, father died in prison. Um, she lost touch with, with Basi over the years, but there is uh, an encounter uh, once Rosa is in in. Uh, outside of South Africa. Now, um, when I look at the, the comments in, in the Goodreads group, um, some people were struggling with the writing. Um, and I can understand that. Um, Gordim and I have a sort of mm, relationship, and that's mainly due uh, with my struggles with her writing. Um, this twofold structure that I mentioned in the beginning, this introspective uh, first person account, and then this um, third person, very detached, objective account, 
um, is sometimes feeling, yeah, getting the feeling of detachment and it, it's sort of, I don't know, it doesn't always work for me. Um, and also Nadine Gorda de doesn't has a lot of dialogue in um, in the book, but she has a, a certain way of writing the dialogue. It's uh, let me see whether I can find something. Yeah, here you can see it here. She writes um, these you know uh, dashes, and there is no he sh said she said. Um, because she doesn't like that. That's what she said in an interview. But for me, that's not a pleasurable reading experience, these dashes and having to figure out who is talking. So, I mean, she the, the book um, uh, contemplates a lot of important issues. Uh, obviously, apartheid, uh, but when the book de develops towards the end, we also have the, the uh, very famous or infamous, I should say, Soweto uprisings in 1976, where a lot of people were killed, black people mainly, school children were killed by the police. Um, and the, the main focus is the question, how does a white South African um, find a place within um, the liberation movement? There's a um, uh, a, a central, I would say, uh, dialogue between um, uh, Rosa and Basi when she re-meets him, in which we understand that uh, uh, it's a black people's liberation movement, of course, because the, the black population in South Africa the, during the time of apartheid was the, uh, the majority. And so this white savior idea that Rosa might have and maybe also her, her father might have is really put into question, which I think is really interesting because on the one hand, of course, if you lived in South Africa as a white person during the apartheid, you should oppose um, the regime and you should oppose apartheid, but you are not the leader you have to follow um, the black leadership of the movement. So I thought the, the theme and the topic was really interesting. Um, but yeah, it didn't, it just didn't grab me as much as the topic would suggest. Um, and that's mainly due, like I said, uh, to the writing style that is just not quite my cup of tea. I mean, I'm happy, uh, it is, was a reread for me, I'm happy that I reread it, and it's certainly an important book, and Nadine Godema is an important uh, writer, but it will not end up on any of my uh, favorites uh, lists. And of course, I'm interested what if you read along uh, what you thought of the book, um, please let me know down in the comments or maybe you want to pick it up uh, after watching this video. That is perfect as well, of course. Um, have you read any other Nadine Gordimer? My favorite Gordimer is um, Julie's People, uh, uh, July's People, I'm sorry, <laughs> July's People, which is quite a different book from many of her books. It's a dystopian, um, uh, no, alternative history book of South Africa. Um, so it, it's quite different from the rest of her work. But anyway, uh, let me know uh, what you feel uh, about it. And uh, for April, of course, uh, I we will read our book number six, which will bring us halfway through our reading schedule because we have 12 books scheduled. And that is Toni Morrison's Song of Solomon. Toni Morrison, of course, does need an introduction and she won the Nobel Prize for Literature two years after Nadine Gordimer in 1993. So this was it for the Nobel Women number five. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope uh, you've enjoyed it. Like I said, looking forward to, uh, to your comments uh, down below and I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.